Yeah, I'm reading about all this in English uh, language newspapers at the German bakery. One after another, a Herald reporter, the woman was gang raped a few meters from a foxhole police bunker on Arambol Beach while the whole state was on alert. Looking for terrorists. Well, we know who the terrorists are. They're the Indian rapists. Um, what else? Herald News. Uh, due to the subdued mood of the terrorist attacks in Bombay, the uh, Chikati School sadly announces it's canceling its Christmas party for children. Oh, come on. Give the kids some balloons. Eddie summarizes up the mood perfectly. Earthman, nothing is getting better. Hmm. Well, I have the life story of Eddie to write, you know. I'm not going to allow assassins, rapists, party killers to distract me from my passion. Uh, I'm on a mission. So on the bed of Albert de Sousa's guest house, I collect all my scattered uh, interview papers and review what I have documented up to now. This book is designed for baby boomers with dementia. So if you've already forgotten, <laughs> you know, what I performed two hours ago, you'll get these like overlapping, <laughs> trying to... I really want you to know the story of Eight Finger Eddie. So if I have to review my notes a lot, that's why I'm thinking of you. Okay. Shh. Uh, all right. Anybody remember uh, Eddie uh, 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 going back across the hashish trail uh, to India? No. <laughs> Wrong. It's just this is a test, okay? He's actually going from Kathmandu to Europe. Of course, connoisseur hash in every country goes through, especially Afghanistan. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but then a uh, Danish musician's finger him, and he gets busted. Does three months in jail, deported to London. Mm, Proudly metropolitan uh, freaks him out. So. <clears throat> As a second winner in Morocco after a painful amphetamine-fueled relationship with a Danish chick in Marrakesh. He travels alone again. <sighs> yeah. Finally gets his head a little bit more back together, all calmed down, and picks up his uh, $14,000 divorce settlement from Gwen in cash in a bank in Zurich. That's his last vulnerable exposure to the law. No more paper trail. What a relief. And what does he do with all that cash after that? It's none of your business. Uh, well, look, uh, Eddie, he's now hip. I mean, he learns as he goes the dark nature of amphetamines, huh? Oh, he's more tight-lipped. Uh, yeah, he restashes his money in a 100% secure alternative location, <laughs> known only to himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basic survival strategy. Just withdraw the interest on the nest egg. Don't touch the capital. And this is his monthly allowance for the rest of his life. It's about $100 a month. Well, Eddie gets his natural groove back <laughs> as he travels across the Hashish Trail to India for the second time. Well, the only travel glitch uh, he gets at the, in Meshet in far eastern Iran, uh, there's a cholera epidemic sweeping this region on both sides of the border, so everybody's got to do a, uh, you know, some, some uh, cholera tablet regime thing. And... Um, Well, he gratefully splits away from the other freaks in the guest house. Because uh, three immature travelers, British couple and Canadian, <laughs> their behavior is so uncool with ashes. 
Mm -hmm. And their sexual naivete culminates when uh, Cheryl, the sexual princess in ivory right panties, uh, surreptitiously gets fucked from behind by the chief of police. Well, she's kind of half asleep. Imagine. Ugh. Yeah, the older Steffel will... He's grateful to travel alone. Get get away from those idiots. Huh? He takes the bus to the Afghan border and crosses into Afghanistan, into the mystery and freedom of the Orient. And when he enters India in Amritsar... Ooh. Well, he senses the weather is too cold for Kathmandu, so he travels to Goa, for the first time. He chills out in Culver Beach for three months while uh, living with a kind native family. Uh, don't worry, nothing to do about rent. Just like, we got room, come on in. Uh, he's the only non going on a bench this whole 1966-1967 season. Uh, no sin at all. Only him. Yeah. Uh, then he goes up to Bombay. So some uh, stuff about his money at American Express meets American Day. <sighs> Bombay Freak House. Mm -hmm. Juhu Beach. North of town. Well, Eddie's, he's real hesitant to live with hippies. <laughs> but soon he is grooving to the sounds of Bob Dylan. The Beatles. Relaxes into his natural role as the wise elder. Smoked hashish blends in with the tribe of hippies. Yeah. Oh. Well, <clears throat> he more than blends in. Uh, yeah, after patiently uh, helping the flipped out Danish girl, uh, Camilla, come down to earth. Well, one of the ways he helped her was to make love with her. In fact, all the other hippie chicks in the Bombay Freak House want to make love with him also.